I'm going to solve this problem here involving the, um, the hyperbola, which I call h, which is x squared minus y squared is 1. Now, of course, it has two branches. There's a second branch over the other side, but we're only you know, concerned with the, with the um, right-hand branch in this problem. Now, the first thing is that we've marked on here a point P, and I've marked the coordinates as cosh t, shine t, and the first thing I want to do is to show that that actually is correct. In other words, that this point P does, in fact, lie on the hyperbola H with, with uh, x value cosh t and y coordinate shine t. And that's very easy to show because I just need to substitute into the equation x squared minus y squared equals 1 and show that it works. So the left hand side would be x squared minus y squared. I plug it in, so that's cos squared t minus shine squared t. But you know from your hyperbolic functions that cos squared minus shine squared t is 1, and that's the right hand side. So that's very easy, just to check that that point actually does lie on the uh, on the hyperbola. But in other words, saying a bit more about this, this tells me that this parametrizes, this is a way of parametrizing the hyperbola using the parameter t. Much the same way as we use cos and sine to parametrize a circle. Here we're using cos and shine to do the hyperbola. Which by the way is why we call these functions the hyperbolic functions because they're used to parametrize the hyperbola. Now the, the next part of the problem is we're going to look at this little area here and I'm calling that area A of T. So that's the area uh, made by the curve, the x-axis and the line joining O and P together. So we're going to write down what this area is. So the A of T is going to be equal to, well it's not hard to see in the picture, it's going to be a triangle. So it's going to be the area of the triangle O uh, per q minus the area under the curve. That's this little area in here. So that's going to be minus the area under the curve. And we can calculate that because this is a triangle, so it's just a half the base times the height. So that's easy enough. Now the area, well, we're going to do some integration to get the area, so I'm going to subtract off the integral. And I'm going to be integrating um, from this point here, which is 1, I put uh, y to be 0, I get 1. So integral from 1 up to this point q, and q has its x coordinate cos t. And I want the area under the curve, so I make y the subject of this. So I'm going to get 1 minus x squared, and then take the square root of dx. I think that's what you were asked to do in this problem, was to find an expression for the area. Well, you look at this integral here, this is a very nasty integral, it's a very hard one to do actually. You'd have to make some sort of trig or even hyperbolic probably substitution in this case in order to get this integral out to simplify this. But the, the, very, the cleverness of this question is that rather than try and work out this integral, what we're asked to do now is to calculate the derivative of this function. And then when you do that, something quite remarkable happens when you calculate the derivative. So I'm going to differentiate this function, and it's good practice uh, of our fundamental theorem of calculus as well here. I'm going to differentiate. So what do I do? I copy the first. I differentiate the second. So that's going to become another cosh. And then I copy the second, differentiate the first, that becomes shine. So I get one half cos squared plus one half shine squared minus. Now when I differentiate this, I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the x in here with the cosh. With, with the, the cosh of t, and then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of what's upstairs here, the cosh, and that gives me a shine. So it's just a uh, typical example of using the fundamental theorem of calculus plus the chain rule. Now, we use the fact that we know that cosh squared minus shine squared is 1, so 1 minus cosh squared is shine squared, so that becomes another shine, so I get a half 
cos squared t plus a half shine squared t. And then I get minus that shine squared, take the square root and get shine, so you get shine squared t. I can simplify this a little bit. And indeed, I can take out a half, so I get a half minus one is minus a half. Take the half out, and then I hope to your great surprise, it certainly was to mine, out comes a half. Now I'm going to put a little exclamation mark there because that's very surprising. You start off with this very complicated looking formula here for this area, and when you take its derivative, out comes a half. Because that means I can recover a of t now by integrating, not by having to do this complicated integral, but doing a very easy integral, just integrating a half. So for the final part of the problem then, I'm going to, for part b, I'm just going to say, well now, so a of t, I can now just integrate this, I get one half t, but of course when you integrate, don't forget you pick up a constant, so I'm going to pick up a plus c here, which we have to worry a little bit about. Well, okay, I'm probably going to work out that constant by specialising t. So I go back to the picture and think, is there a nice, simple, sensible value of t to pick? Well, if I go back and put t to be zero, then that's going to put the point p here at that point one. And you can see in the picture then, the area is not very interesting. If that p is down at the point one, then the area is just a line, so you're going to get zero area. So at t equals zero, constant is going to be, sorry, a of t is going to be zero, and so that tells me that the constant is zero. And that's nice because we can get rid of the constant. So the final conclusion is then that this area is just one half of t. Now, having done the problem, just think a little bit about how nice the answer is back in terms of the original problem. We parametrize this curve by using cosh t and shine t. When we work out this little area in here, it turns out to be just half the value of the parameter. The half's slightly awkward, but imagine you uh, reflected it and made the area not just the top bit, but if I extended it down here and took the whole area in here, then the area of this shape in here would just be t by symmetry. And so that area in there is just numerically equal to the value of the parameter, which is a very nice piece of drawing.